For the next two days, we relentlessly continue our trek across Kilimanjaro, Stark Heath and Moorland. We travel through good weather and bad, with the mountaintop continuously playing hide and seek with the group. The Shira Plateau is actually the collapsed crater of the oldest of the three volcanic vents that together make up Mount Kilimanjaro. While the highest and our current objective, Kibo, is dormant, Mawenzi and Shira are no longer active. We've been walking through a boulder field for hours now, and it's, it's full of these massive rocks scattered all over the landscape, as you can see here, and they're pretty big. I mean, the sheer size of these things is amazing. 30, 40, probably 80 kilos in weight. And just imagine, we're about 10, 15 kilometers, maybe, from the peak of Kibo, and the force required to move something this big, or 80 kilos of this, from all the way up there to down here, is enormous but here's what's really mind-blowing imagine how much force is needed to move that it's in environments like this that you start to understand how the many myths and legends of the mountain have come about the Chaga people long believed that there were magical genies and spirits living on the mountain and there are many tales of treasure troves hidden in Kilimanjaro's unexplored caves and valleys. I know firsthand just how hard it is to get up here and we're not even halfway up the mountain yet. Today though I'm going to meet two gentlemen who between them have a century's worth of experience. One of them in fact was trained by the first guide to ever make it to the summit of Kibo. The former head of the Tanzanian military, retired General Marisho Serakeke and the legendary expedition guide Emmanuel Minja meet me to tell me about their many years on the mountain. You've been climbing this mountain several times for nearly 40 years. How has the mountain changed in that time? When, when I started growing up, first time, 1965, the traffic was practically zero. Very few people used to go up this mountain. Climate change has made a lot of difference on the mountain. The snow, uh, what I saw in 1955, and what we see now, there's a hell of a difference. It's a plenty of snow. Sometimes it used to come up to 14,000 feet. But today, the most times, the, the snow is limited to the actual top. The vegetation has changed as human traffic increased. There were a lot of fires. So you find, uh, you find uh, once um, the vegetation is burned out, it takes years to grow back. back. So there are a lot of changes from what we saw at the beginning and now. <laughs> You used to bring soldiers up here, General? Every year I used to come up with some senior uh, military officers. One group of senior officers whom I considered they were being a bit too comfortable by growing tummies. Um, and the other group was the people that reading their reports. Their reports were excellent. And these were people that you could entrust them with command. But I didn't know them personally. What I used to do at 18,000 feet on the scree from Marangu's uh, side, I was always manual first and then me. And then officer whom I wanted to interview on the mountain is number three. And I said, uh, uh, so and so, I said yes sir. 
the somebody at the rear go down and help him up. And then I used to observe the reaction. And this was very important for me to know exactly when this is a commander, this fellow is a commander of a unit, and then it comes to a crucial, difficult situation. How does he handle his men? For those who were, were building up tummies, I didn't have any, any interview with them because the mountain interviewed them. <laughs> the <laughs> the <skills laughs> yeah. Talking to these legends of the mountain has made me more aware than ever of how difficult this climb can be. The team moves on, and we're finally getting towards the end of the Shira Plateau. Soon, we will start seriously climbing again, and that's when our battle with altitude will really start. The next major milestone for us will be passing 4,000 meters of altitude as we move up into the alpine desert zone of the mountain. We have some steep obstacles ahead, including reaching the imposing volcanic rock obelisk known as Lava Tower, before we attempt the most dangerous section of the mountain trail, the infamous Western Breach. Since you are no mistress, 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 since you are